Good morning, food. Yes. It is time for us to be together and start with Spirit of Life. Ah, yes. December 16th at 2. Three opportunities to be with Reverend Elizabeth. You'll also notice if you go onto our website, FlorenceUUF.org, we've got all of these events listed on the calendar as well as the times that we do our taping here on the Fridays. Uh, today we're taping at 1 o'clock. Normally we're going to go forward with 11 o'clock. You're welcome to come join us, okay? Be a part of the fun. Uh, let's see, Reverend Elizabeth is also in the process of creating some adult religion, religious education classes. So stay tuned. We've got some good things in store for us as we go forward. Other announcements. I'm just reminded that the Florence Food Share Pounding is happening on November 21st at Grocery Outlet. I don't have details, but I think it's a drive-by thing. You can drive by and drop off your food or drop off some money or go inside and shop. But all the food that's created, all the pounds, will be matched and uh, will be given to Florence Food Share. So that's a really good deal. And right? it's really fun. And it's fun. Yes. It is fun. <laughs> it is. It is. Are there any announcements from anybody here that you know of? Did I miss anything? We've got it. Jim? Okay. So at this point, I invite you at home to light your own candle as Reverend Elizabeth shares the words from Deborah Falk, as our foof candle is lit. We extinguish our chalice flame with the words of David Bomba. We are here in this sacred hour dedicated to the proposition that beneath all our differences and behind all our diversity, there is a unity that binds us forever together in spite of time, 
and death and the space between the stars. As we go forth, may we always pause in silent witness to that unity. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. This is the time for our service that we do our joys and concerns. We do this to remind us what a community, what a loving and caring community we are. We do this to really acknowledge that no matter where we are, we are still connected because we are all one. And we want to know about what's going on with you. So I have a few things today. I got, an inf I got information uh, this morning from two people, actually. And I want to say something first. If you want to be anonymous when you call me and, and leave a message, that's fine. Uh, or a text. But if you don't, just say so-and-so here because your number doesn't show up. And then I don't know who's giving me the information. But anonymous information is, is fine, too. So I have a concern. Jude Craddock, who you most of you know, yeah. this morning fell and broke her arm. No way. Now the last information I got, she was in the hospital. So you can call the hospital and see. And one of my callers who informed me of this said she was going to follow up with some care and information on care. But I don't know who to contact. So the, anyway, the information is out there now. Whoever you are, let her know. <laughs> a second is, um, is a sorrow. So Larry Costa, he was a member of Lani and Kamala's musical group. Um, many people know him in this community. He passed on last week. After a, I don't know, was it lengthy or short? A short bout of cancer. So he is definitely in our hearts and minds, and I know we're going to miss him, but his music will live on. Here's another concern, sorrow, whatever you want to call it. Diane Friedberg, who all of you know, her friend Chris from England, now I don't remember his last name. I did write it down, but he didn't quite make it from my house to here. But Chris from England, who some of you know, she has assured me, he is in hospice in Spruce Point. He, is, he can have visitors, but why don't you call Diane Friedberg uh, to kind of coordinate that if you would like. Zana continues to improve with her knee surgery. And when one other person, you know Beverly Apple, yeah, she's a part of our community. But her new partner, or newish partner, Troy, had some really complicated ankle surgery. So he's out for the count for two weeks, lying in his recliner. I didn't see him. Kind of being served a little bit. I don't know how much he's pushing that. But I know that our, <laughs> our heart goes out to him because he is a very active guy and it's difficult to be in your recliner for two weeks. Can I drop two shells? For Absolutely. Right for the shelves. caretaker, for yes. Beverly. <laughs> the caregiver, and the Beverly. For and, Chris. and the one for yes. Diane and Chris. Yes. Okay. Oh, and here's a joy. When I had my little, you know, neck surgery a couple weeks ago, I actually got a card from the care committee. Oh. And it was really lovely because now I realize how much, how fun they are when you get them <laughs> with everybody's name on it. Oh, so, nice. thank you. I have a little thing I want to say just to remind us everything that's been going on these last two weeks. Suppose we make a daily habit of feeling that we like people and they like us. Mm -hmm. We belong to them and they belong to us. In a very real sense, everyone we meet is part of our own family to love and to enjoy. And so it is. Now, we have a very special reading oh, from Brooke Schaefer. You want to add one? Yeah. Oh, come on. Oh, yeah. come on. Oh, yeah, oh, please. please. And here's your pen. To say that 
This week was the anniversary of Nin's son's passing, oh. and uh, I just wanted to say, um, send blessings to her and Vanessa and Elon and her family as Absolutely. they really continue to grieve that loss. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm going to drop one more shell, if that's okay, mm -hmm. for all those joys and concerns, sorrows that were not expressed that you might have in your heart that's chosen not to share right now. And then I invite Brooke back up. She's got a responsive reading she's going to share. This came from Reverend Elizabeth, and I think really ties in nicely with our program today. So Brooke, come on back up. This reading is called, Even This is Enough, and it's by Vanessa Southern. So much undone. So much to do, so much to heal in us and the world, so much to acquire, a meal, a healthy body, a fit one, a lover, a job, a better job. <laughs> Proof we have and are enough, just around the center, the corner of now. And up against it, the reality of all that falls short and the limits of today. We honor the limits. If your body won't do what it used to, for right now, let it be enough. If your mind won't stop racing or can't think of the word, let it be enough. If you are here utterly alone and in despair, be all that here with us. If today you cannot sing because your throat hurts or you don't have the heart for music, be silent. The world won't, won't stop spinning on her axis if you don't rise to all occasions today. Love won't cease to flow in your direction. Your heart won't stop beating. All hope won't be lost. You are part of the plan for this world's salvation. Of that I have no doubt. The world needs its oceans of people striving to be good, to carry us to the shores of hope and wash fear from the beachheads and cleanse all wounds so they can heal. But oceans are big, and I am sure there are parts that don't feel up to the task of the whole some days. Rest if you must, then, like the swimmer lying on her back who floats, or the hawk carried on cushions of air. Rest in chairs made to hold weary lives in space carved out for the doing of nothing much but being. Perhaps then you will feel in your bones, in your weary heart, the aching, healing sense that this is enough, even this, that we are enough, you are enough, enough. Blessed be. Wow. Catherine, do you think you might go over to that computer? We're going to play a little uh, musical interlude. Our, our trusty Ray is gone. I think he's up watching the, the big tides up in Yahats, where I think I'll go tomorrow. High tides. So I invite you to relax and enjoy a musical interlude created and performed by Jeff Lovejoy, and it's titled Enter with Care.
Mm. Enter with care. Reverend Elizabeth has a special message for us today. I think that song might be a good prelude. Her title is called Bind Up Old Wounds. And remember, Elizabeth will be on our Zoom call at 5 p.m. so you can talk with her about her message and maybe share um, what it meant to you and vice versa. So, Reverend Elizabeth. So people sometimes ask me about Unitarian Universalism, coming to us from other religious backgrounds or perhaps from none, wondering what it means to be a Unitarian Universalist. And I say, as you may also have said before, that we're a church, but I add quickly, not that kind of church. Yet I have no such hesitation no such caveat, about the word religion. Are we a religion? Yes, we are a religious people, people of faith, because the word religion comes from the roots re legare, to reconnect. Legare is like the ligaments that provide a structure to our lives, joining bone to bone, holding in its tension that web, that tapestry of life, linking the meaningful substance that creates our grounding and the framework of our lives. The meaning of religion is the place that we reconnect, the place that we bring our lives into focus and span what makes meaning across the particulars of any one person's story to create patterns, to show us the great tapestry of all existence and a larger picture of what it means to be ourselves in the world. Now, many years ago, when I was a teenager, I had a very particular and somewhat painful experience involving ligaments. It makes this metaphor very particularly meaningful to my own story because I was on a trip in the back country in a canyon in Utah with my family. And I decided to climb up the side of the canyon wall just a bit. I decided to climb to see what was in a small cave. Were there snakes, stones, a plant? And interesting and shady and lovely as it was, as I was coming down, I was thinking, not paying too much attention, and suddenly I hit a spot of slick rock where the water had been wet by the rain again and again until there was no sandiness, no texture, nothing to catch on. And I slid faster and faster until I jumped into space off the side of the canyon wall and came down on the end of my toe. And like that, a ligament snapped, stretched beyond its bounds. And there I was with a toe that was unstable, swollen, hurt, too much to walk, and yet I must. With that injury, I walked out over 10 miles, over two days, and we made it to the trailhead and we made it home but to this day, that physical trauma has created an instability physically in my life. I wear shoes more often than not. Walking on sand can cause the bones to separate just a bit more than they ought to. And so it is with our lives. Having a wounding from our past 
especially in that space of ligare, that space of the ligaments, having religious wounding is something that if you don't heal properly, if you don't get help, that reattachment and reconnection, you're forever working around something that isn't seated quite right, something pulled apart and never quite put back together in a stable configuration. Now, I wear good shoes, I build muscle, keeping that set of bones stable and well muscled for any period of time makes it less likely that I will have pain or discomfort. I can do things that make it more or less okay. Even though something harmful happened, it doesn't mean I'm stuck or in pain forever, but I need to work on it, to check in regularly, to go longer and longer without re-traumatizing that spot. And that metaphor, I think really carries through in many ways. You may have heard some already. If we've come from a place of trauma, we need to check for tenderness, make sure nothing is necrotic, dying in our souls or infected and tender. Tenderness might be a place that causes us to lash out in pain. If we've got something frayed or broken overstretched or snapped off from where it provided a connection, we might need to replace that. Another belief or practice, if we're talking about the spirituality and not the metaphor, not just to leave it lying there, hanging. That's where instability comes from. And so here we are in our new our current religious space. Finding new ways of making connections, rebinding the broken, healing and becoming well and whole. That's the power of community, which means strength and wellness for us. And it may be that which allows us to rest, to believe that we are enough, that it is enough to be as we are right now, and yet also better to become ever stronger, ever more healed, ever more whole, and do that work in the safety of our communal spaces. That is the power of religion, the place to knit together, to bind up the broken. Henry Nguyen, a Christian mystic, speaks to two possible paths forward. There is the mystic experience for the wounded healer, the person trying to become a healer of the world while attending to their own wounds. In the mystic experience, spiritual practice provides a power of transforming love that moves our own cells, our spiritual cells, to repair any damage done within us and bring us back to the world. And there is the outward path. Nguyen claims the revolutionary path, changing a society into one which can heal our hearts through mutual aid by caring for one another, where we reject alienation, we reject destruction, we do not excuse bigotry but hold forth hope for each person, even as we set boundaries on behaviors that damage, that do not lead to further love. And Nguyen writes that the people who are most able in his own, the Christian tradition, but also in ours, are those who choose both the inner and the outer path, as we do, 
Unitarian Universalists who believe that to be just as centered and spiritually alive is a pairing that we must be responsible for. And here we are, therefore, co-creating the community of faith, binding up the broken, setting ourselves once again on this path, slowing down as needed and paying attention to our bodies, our hearts, our minds, and our souls, finding comfort and new purpose. For as Vesnessa Southern's reading already reminded us, we must start, we must be from time to time in that place of enough, where we may not feel ready, but we are enough as we are. And you will hear Starhawk as our closing reading, reminding us that community means strength. We are all seeking a community that reminds us that we are enough and yet we can be more. The freedom to be at peace now and again and to rest without pain is a healing we seek. And here in Unitarian Universalism, that reconnection is what we are striving for. Not a place to be comforted by avoiding our religious pasts or avoiding the religions that poke at us, that remind us of Christian hegemony in this world, of the ways in which we assume Christianity as a norm from literature to, to our media, to even our political speeches. We don't turn away from it, but find healthy ways back into understanding for ourselves, reconnecting to bring those stories within the common shared values of this community. And then rest with them. Wendell Berry wrote a poem, The Peace of Wild Things, which I imagine many of you may have heard before. It reminds me that in the pews of my congregation, I find, as I do in nature, that I can rest in the grace of the world and am free. And this freedom to simply be at peace is the healing that we need from time to time. It allows us as whole people to be ready to take on the building of the beloved community, the inner and the outward path. For we are a relational faith where justice becomes our hope of redemption and healing found through community, found through love, found through the care that helps us to heal and then to stretch and then to strengthen ourselves, building our muscles for justice, rebinding our ligaments stretched or broken in a religion that holds us each and all, being caregivers of one another in the mutuality that forms our denomination and our people of faith. For we are not a people who stand still, but a movement. And for movement, we need all those parts every bit of your precious body and your precious soul. So bring them here where we bind up the broken, where we are enough, where we are loved and loving. 
Amen and blessed be. Thank you, Reverend Elizabeth. Great message. Look forward to sharing uh, and deepening our understanding of this message with you today at 5 p.m. Next Sunday, the 22nd, we have our own Dean Schrock coming back with his message titled, Stop in the Name of Love. Oh. I'm not so sure that's how he's going to present it. Just saying it. We could sing that. We could sing it, though, right? Stop in the Name of Love by Dean Schrock. We'll be recording live on Friday the 20th at 11 a.m. If you want to be a part of the audience, physical distancing and masks will be required. Every week in our church, we take up an offering. It's good to remind ourselves from time to time that the offering is symbolic as well as practical. We know that it is through the pledges that we build our budget and fund our yearly programs pay our minister and for our music, and the guest at the pulpit. We finance the comfort and space here at FOOF. Whatever sparse space it is, we, we keep it as best we can. Our offering says that the act of giving is as essential to our spiritual well-being as anything else we do when we're together on Sunday, virtually or in person. May we also remember our friends at Habitat for Humanity. In this e-blast on Sunday morning, I put the um, five-minute video from Janelle Morgan, who's the executive director at, at uh, Habitat for Humanity, and it's a great opportunity to really hear what they're up to and um, her ask for your financial consideration. Please also know that I have a check that's going to be delivered on Wednesday to our friends at Food Backpacks for Kids. We raised, I think, $755, thanks to you and I will be delivering that to Marilyn Barba on Wednesday. You can submit your pledge payment and or contributions at any convenient time. You can visit our website, and that's florenceuuf.org. Click on the Donate button. You can mail us a check, P.O. Box 2502, Florence 97439. We'll take care of it if you want to designate how much to go to our community partner and how much to come to us. So as we move forward with our offering here at FOOF and in your home, repeat after me. Divine love through me. Divine, Divine love, love through me. Blesses and multiplies. Blesses and multiplies. All that I am. All that, all that I am. All that I give. All that I give. And all that I receive. All that I receive. I am prosperous now. I am prosperous now. Blessed be. Blessed, Blessed be. be. So we're going to extinguish our chalice, and I invite you at home to extinguish the flame of your chalice as Reverend Elizabeth shares a reading by David Bumba. We extinguish our chalice flame with the words of David Bumba. We are here in this sacred hour dedicated to the proposition that beneath all our differences and behind all our diversity, there is a unity that binds us forever together in spite of time and death and the space between the stars. As we go forth, May we always pause in silent witness to that unity. In closing, I offer the following word from Starhawk titled, Community Means Strength. And this really goes to the heart of joys and concerns that Catherine shared earlier. We build community one person at a time, one joy, one sorrow, one sharing at a time. So I, I love this reading. Please enjoy it with me. We all are longing to go home, to some place we have never been, a place half remembered and half envisioned. We can only catch glimpses of from time to time, community. 
Somewhere there are people to whom we can speak with passion without having the words catch in our throats. Somewhere a circle of hands will open to receive us. Eyes will light up as we enter. And voices will celebrate with us whenever we come into our own power. Community means strength that joins our strength to do the work that needs to be done. Arms to hold us when we falter, a circle of healing, a circle of friends, some place where we can be free. Blessed be. And now we're going to invite two of you to come back up. We're going to sing the peace song. And uh, I imagine it's going to be about as lively as the spirit of life was at the beginning. So come on back up, two of you. I we'll also want to make sure I can do this nice check. We love checks. Thank you. We just love checks. I'll put it in my trusted left pocket. I'm going to come over here. Peace song. And then we're, and then we're, uh, yeah. Let there be peace on earth. Yes. Um, and I know how much Anne Lathrop yes. enjoys this song. So Anne, you're such a sweet friend. And you're such a blessing, and I want to dedicate this to you.